Hey guys, today we're doing another small telescope modification, this time with the Astrotech AT72ED2 refractor that you see behind me. And this flattener, the William Optics Flat 73A. Just some background on this little refractor. I've had it since last August 2020, and while it's a great little telescope, I've constantly had issues with uh, field curvature. And I've tried multiple uh, different field flatteners. I started with the Hotec flattener, which is kind of a generic, one-size-fits-all type flattener. And had some uh, nasty stretch stars towards the edges and corners. Uh, so then I thought, well, I'll get the Astrotec flattener that I would assume is made specifically for this telescope. So I got that. Same thing. Um not much better uh, and then somebody suggested well you need a field flattener for short focal length telescopes so I purchased the Orion flattener for um, short short refractors and that seemed to do a little bit better that's probably been the best of the three but still didn't get uh, perfectly round stars towards the edges and in the corners and one thing that's kind of baffled me with with these flatteners is typically the recommended uh, spacing is 55 millimeters from whatever point on that flattener to your image sensor but that seemed to not be the case with the Astrotech and the Orion and I didn't test too much with the Hotec which I still have so I guess I could but I started experimenting with longer um, backspacing and the Astrotech seemed to do the best around, I don't know, like 72 millimeters. And the Orion seemed to do the best around 62 or so. But I didn't really uh, go much, much further past 65 with an Orion. So um, this William Optics flattener actually has a recommended backspacing, I believe, of 66. So that's kind of interesting. And here's a closer look at the William Optics flattener. And one might think that this is made specifically for the William Optics, I think it's Zenith Star 73. And that's kind of what I assumed. But then I saw someone on Cloudy Nights mention that they used this telescope and this flattener together and got perfectly round stars all the way to the edge. So. I guess one thing to keep in mind is a lot of these telescopes are kind of just made by a few different companies from what I understand overseas and it looks like the a lot of the William Optics telescopes are pretty much the same design as the uh, this is the Astronomics house brand I believe the Astrotech uh, and also High Point Scientific I think does the Apertura Apertura brand and that looks like it might be a clone also. So uh, the Astrotech telescope comes with a rotator built in, which is right here. And that's kind of nice, even though I have one on my QHY camera. But basically all you have to do is screw off this entire portion right here. And then this screws directly on. So not much to it. And it basically seems like they were... Uh, made to work with each other. So I'm going to throw that on right now. And it actually doesn't take much force to turn this. I was kind of worried that there was going to be screws or uh, Allen screws that I was going to have to loosen, but that's not the case. This just screws right off. Another thing to mention is the William Optics telescopes. I don't know what the Zenith Star sells for, but this Telescope went for four sixty nine this summer. I think now it's going for four eighty nine. It's a popular telescope, and I think there's supply issues going on right now. Um, but you know, William Optics telescopes are considered to be very well made, and this Astrotech also is very well made. And when I look at this flattener and compare it to kind of the finishes, on I don't know what what you would. Uh, consider this piece the rotator and I don't know draw tube or I don't know but anyway I kind of like the, the finish on the Astrotech 
um, better this kind of shiny aluminum as opposed to the matte aluminum but this isn't bad either so you just screw up the cap and screw this right on and this also has a rotator built in so you don't lose that functionality And I guess I neglected to mention the most important feature of this particular flattener, and that is the fact that it is adjustable for your spacing. So this is your lock ring right here, and this is the adjustable portion which your camera will screw onto. These are, this is an M48 thread on this side. I'm not sure what this one is over here. Uh, but I might as well throw the camera on there right now so you can see. Let's see, can you see that in there? There we go. Okay, so if you just unlock that ring, and you can spin your camera around and I don't know the exact range it's definitely something you should check into before you spin your camera right off and drop it on the ground but and then once you get to where you need to be then you lock it up right there and like I said this all appears to be well made and uh, no slop or no noticeable slop of any kind in there um, other than on the camera itself. So, we'll tighten that up. There we go. In the past, I had been using this adjustable extension tube, um, the SV Boney, Bonnie Company, and these are like 15 bucks or whatever. Not the most well made, and sometimes the, um, it can be difficult to unlock it to adjust it while your camera while your camera's on there because this lock ring is uh, not the greatest um, so it kind of sticks a little bit but this can definitely serve the same purpose but this is just more convenient and the fact that um, I've spoken with somebody that claimed to have gotten amazing results using this particular flattener um, is kind of what motivated me to give it a shot. And this is $200, which is a little bit on the pricey side for um, a flattener, but if it is made specifically for these optics and it works, then I'd say it's worth it because all the other ones that I've used, the Hotec, which is about $150, the Orion, which is about $150, and the AstroTech, which is about 130, 140, uh, didn't really get acceptable results with any of those. So, if it costs another 60 bucks to get amazing sharp round stars across the frame, then I'd say it's worth it. But anyway, um, hopefully this this helps anyone that has this telescope and is battling stretch stars and curvature in the corners. Um, this might be the way to go. I guess I'll know in hopefully a couple days when we get a clear night and I get a chance to test it out and I'll report back to you guys what I find and if it turns out that I'm still battling the same issues then I think I'll probably be trading this telescope out for uh, 8 inch Rasa so we'll see. Thanks guys.